This starts with a small, almost invisible change, a shift not in battery size or chemistry, but in how it's made. Inside a quiet California lab, machines hum softly as they do something no other factory ever has. They print batteries, layer by layer, shape by shape, without ovens, without solvents, without waste. At first, it feels like just a clever trick. But then come the numbers, the cost drops, the weight shrinks, and suddenly, the global battery market begins to shake. What if the true battery revolution isn't electric? What if it's printed? The manufacturing problem nobody talks about. Battery prices have fallen fast over the last decade. But one part of the process stubbornly remains expensive. Electrode manufacturing. Today's batteries still rely on a slow, expensive wet process that mixes toxic solvents, spreads them into thin films, and dries them in massive, energy-hungry ovens. This process not only costs money, but also requires enormous space, hazardous materials, and labor. That's why new battery manufacturers aren't just looking at what goes into a battery, but how it's made. The overlooked problem is how much of the total battery cost isn't about materials at all. It's about the factory footprint, the electricity to run dryers, the equipment to handle waste. The loss occurs when a batch goes bad. And until now, there hasn't been a real way around it. You can shrink battery cells all you want, but as long as you're stuck with giant factories, the savings stop cold. This is where dry electrode printing enters, a process that skips the slurry, the oven, and the scale. It's cleaner, smaller, and radically more efficient. And one company might be just crazy enough to bet everything on it. Saku's Dry Printing Breakthrough California-based Saku has developed something called the Cavian Platform, a dry printing battery system that flips the traditional process on its head. Instead of mixing chemicals into a paste and baking them onto foil, their system prints dry powders directly onto metal sheets. No ovens, no solvents, no toxic fumes to clean up. And the space it takes? About a quarter of what a normal line needs. This isn't just a cleaner solution. It's an economically superior one. Factory costs drop, maintenance drops, energy use drops by nearly a third. Even labor is reduced because the system can recover and reuse material from failed batches. More importantly, it opens up design freedom. Instead of rigid, flat layers, you can build curved or multi-layered electrodes with custom geometries. That means batteries no longer need to be boxy or boring. They can be part of the product structure itself, embedded in a scooter frame, or shaped to fit a curved phone. And since there's no wasted solvent, every bit of active material is used. Efficiency isn't just about numbers anymore. It's built right into the battery's DNA. Batteries that fit the product, not the other way around. Imagine a battery shaped like a bike frame, or a phone with no battery bulge because the power source is part of the shell. This isn't imagination anymore. It's a direct outcome of dry printing. When batteries can be made in custom shapes, design possibilities explode. Electronics become slimmer. Electric vehicles gain more storage in the same volume. And things that never could be battery powered suddenly can. Traditional manufacturing forces everything into rectangles and slabs. That limits design. But with 3D printed electrodes, you're free to think in curves, edges, and forms that were once impossible. For wearable tech, that's a game changer. For drones and robotics, it means lighter frames and more compact power. Even smart appliances, things like cordless blenders or portable air conditioners, could be radically reshaped. And it's not just for looks. More surface area means faster charge and discharge rates. It means more efficient thermal control. Function finally meets form in a way the old world couldn't support. This shift won't just change battery design, it will reshape the products that rely on them. The hidden cost of copper and aluminum. Even if you cut energy costs and factory size, another issue quietly inflates battery prices. The metals used to collect current. Copper for anodes, aluminum for cathodes. And copper, in particular, is a problem. It's heavy, it's expensive, and global demand is about to outpace supply by 2035. Just ask the U.S. Mint, pennies aren't copper anymore for a reason. That's why Saku and others are developing composite current collectors. 
These are lightweight polymers infused with conductive additives that mimic the performance of copper without the cost or weight. Even better, they're inherently safer. Some are flame retardant, reducing the risk of thermal runaway fires. In early lab tests, composite collectors have even outperformed copper in terms of charging speed and thermal stability. If commercialized, they could shave 7 to 10% off the total battery cost. More importantly, they decouple the battery supply chain from the fragile copper market. That's not just cost saving, it's risk management. As copper mines dry up and prices rise, composite materials could become the silent hero behind the next generation of batteries. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. A cathode made of iron salt. Lithium ion batteries rely on cathodes made from expensive, sometimes ethically dubious materials like cobalt and nickel. But a recent breakthrough at Georgia Tech could change that by swapping in a salt. Specifically, iron trichloride. It's a compound so cheap and abundant that it's often used in water treatment. But paired with solid electrolytes, it becomes something else entirely a cathode material that rivals lithium iron phosphate in performance, but at 1-2% of the cost. It delivers higher voltage, similar capacity, and impressive energy density, 558 kg. While it doesn't last quite as long as traditional LFP yet, researchers believe further tuning can get it there, and when it does, it'll offer serious savings. Right now, Cathodes are the most expensive part of a battery. Replacing them with iron chloride could bring total cell costs down to $50,080 per kilowatt hour, half the price of today's market. That's a number the entire industry has been chasing for years. If this low-cost, high-performance cathode proves scalable, the battery market won't just shift, it'll fracture. The age of rare metals might be ending price wars, and the domino effect. While scientists were tinkering with new materials, the real-world battery market was shifting underfoot. In early 2024, China's two battery giants, CATL and BYD, entered a price war, trying to undercut each other by up to 50%. That set off a chain reaction. Every battery maker, from Tesla to LG Chem, suddenly had to figure out how to cut costs or risk losing contracts. And this happened just as EV demand began to wobble. Now, technologies like dry printing and iron cathodes aren't just cool ideas, they're survival strategies. The industry is looking for any edge, lower labor, smaller factories, cheaper input materials. And the moment these cost-saving breakthroughs leave the lab, they'll be adopted fast. Not because they're greener, not because they're better, but because they're cheaper. Economics drives innovation faster than hype. So while consumers may only see lower prices, behind the scenes, battery companies are restructuring everything, from factory layout to chemistry formulas, just to stay in the game. A more sustainable battery future. Beyond cost and performance, these new techniques also tackle one of the battery industry's biggest critics, Sustainability Traditional battery production is dirty, relying on toxic solvents, energy-intensive processes, and mining heavy supply chains. But dry printing changes that. No solvents, less water, lower emissions. Combine that with iron salt cathodes and polymer current collectors, and you get batteries made from widely available, recyclable, and safe materials. This not only slashes production's carbon footprint, but speeds up the payback period, the time it takes for an EV or battery storage unit to offset its manufacturing impact. For nations chasing climate goals, that's critical, especially as the world adds millions of new EVs and grid batteries over the next decade. Cleaner manufacturing isn't just a bonus, it's a necessity. It ensures that the green tech of tomorrow isn't built on the pollution of today. These subtle shifts, cheaper materials, Smarter factories and solvent-free processes may not grab headlines, but they're exactly the kind of boring brilliance that makes revolutions real.